So the other day, we were taking some time off, and it's raining because it's Vancouver. And so I put on the YouTube and searched for some live concert footage. I love to watch that. What comes up is the animals playing House of the Rising Sun. So I'm watching the guitar player, and I notice something really strange. I watch his right hand, and his picking direction is not at all what I expected. It's not at all what I've been teaching all these years. I thought, oh man, I must have taught maybe a hundred people how to play this song, and yet that's not how I pick that pattern. What's going on? Now that footage was from some old TV show, and I know that on those old TV shows, oftentimes they weren't actually playing. It was pre-recorded. Sometimes they weren't even plugged in. And that probably still happens today, right? But it got me thinking that maybe they were just goofing around. So I pulled up another video, and there, indeed, he's playing the same picking pattern, not the one that I play. Now the guy who played that riff was Hilton Valentine. Great name, by the way. He was the one who wrote that opening riff. They didn't write the song. It's an old folk song, right? And many people have played it. And I'm not saying that we've been playing different notes than he did. It's just the pick direction is really unique. So as a guitar teacher, for most of the time, I'm teaching two different types of picking technique. One is alternate picking, which is what we're doing a lot of the time when we're playing solos or practicing scales, etc. But the other technique I teach, or what I call it, is picking the direction you're going next. And that's used typically when we're playing arpeggios or when we're crossing multiple strings in the same direction for, you know, two or more strings. And that's what we typically use when we're playing House of the Rising Sun. Doing a quick YouTube search of other guitar teachers here, it seems like almost everyone is playing the song that way as well. So what is that way? If I'm holding an A minor chord, and I'm gonna play this pattern, I'm gonna go down, 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 because I'm continuing going in that direction. If I'm gonna to go to the string that's this way next, I might as well pick in that direction next. But when I get to the high E string, I'm gonna reverse my pick because that's right before I have to head back this way. So what does that mean? It means I go down, 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 up, up, up. And that seems to be how most people are playing it. Down, 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 up, up, up. It's very efficient, right? It's picking in the direction you're going next. All we have to do for this song is we have to remember that not all of those chords start on the fifth string. The first couple do. Let's see, A minor starts on the fifth string, so our right hand gets to do the same thing on A minor and on C but not on D, right? Because the root of D is D string, so we have to start our picking pattern higher up. And we have kind of a funny problem here. We're out of strings, because the pattern before was, it covered five strings, right? Now we only have four strings for the D because we want to start on the D string, but that's okay. We just repeat that high string, which is what he does in the original as well. We'll hear that high E string, that F sharp note, we'll hear it twice. And then what do we have? He plays an F chord and he plays the smaller kind of cowboy F we call it. And cowboy F is also four strings. So we get the same pattern on the F. Right? We go back to A minor, five strings. C chord, five strings. But now we have an E, or sometimes an E7 is played, and that's six strings. So the common thing to do there is to skip the A string. We want to make sure we start on that low E string because that's the root of that chord, right? We want that E. And we skip the A string because we want the pick to get into those higher notes sooner. And we don't want the chord to sound too muddy by staying on all those lower strings. So we're gonna play the E string, the sixth string, then the D string, the fifth string, and then we continue the pattern from there. So we end up with a five string pattern, skipping the fifth string. And that's pretty much all the chords we need for the song, right? It's E or E7 sometimes, but that would be the same for the right hand anyway. So here's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
on our Patreon this week. We're going to have tabs for this lesson, a jam track for the song, and practice tips that will help you to solo over this unique chord progression. A link to our Patreon is below. The song is pretty fast. I mean, it's not crazy fast, but it's actually really hard to make each one of those notes sit perfectly in the pocket, right, in time. And it's tricky to keep it going because if you've ever tried, you've got to play the entire song. Doing that arpeggio over and over nonstop, it can be kind of tiring. The main way to do that I think is to make sure that our hand stays relaxed. One of the things that I notice a lot of students do when they're trying hard either to pick fast or to do arpeggios constantly is that they start to tense up here because they think that using the muscle is going to make us do it better and tighter and straighter and more on time and it's just not true. In fact, especially with this kind of picking technique where we're going pick in the direction we're going next. We want this all to loosen up a bit and we want to feel that pick just glide across those strings, especially the first part. Now, if you wanted to, some people will use a pinky plant. Pinky plant means that you kind of pinky will stay here touching the guitar and it helps you to not lose place. And generally, I think that's okay. In the long run for some songs, it's gonna slow you down because it will actually limit our movement, right? But honestly, if you watch me play this song sometimes, sometimes I've got my pinky there, sometimes I don't. It's nice to not have to rely on it, but if it helps you to get the song going for now, I think it's fine. Actually, let's talk about that groove because that's something else that's quite unique about this song is that this song has what's called a 6-8 time signature. 6-8, what does that mean? Well, most rock songs, most pop songs, most folk songs, most country songs, they are in 4-4 four, four time which means the pulse, the feeling of the song, the groove is in groups of four, right? One, two, three, four, and this is not. It's in groups of six. You could divide that in half and call it in groups of three, but really the pulse is six. We call one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. You feel that there is an emphasis on one and an emphasis on four. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, and so this brings me to the mystery of when I saw this video of him playing the intro, you can see his hand for a moment and the pick direction is not at all what I've been teaching for all these years and it's not at all what it looks like any of those other teachers on YouTube are teaching either. It's kind of odd. To me, it seems very inefficient, but who am I to judge? He's the one who wrote the intro. This is what he does. He goes down, 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 up, down, up up, down, up at the end. I don't know why he did that. Maybe it's because those three notes are slower than the previous three notes. Da, 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 da. So maybe he was thinking that that would help him to get the groove of those slower three notes. And honestly, it's really hard to play it like that. Like I literally, I don't even know if I can play it like that. <laughs> There's one, anyway. I don't know how far I could keep that going. But you're noticing, like, look how much I have to look at my hand in order to do that picking pattern. Whereas if I do the one that the rest of us all do, I don't need to look. There's nothing wrong with looking at your right hand, by the way, especially when you're learning a new picking pattern. And I'm gonna have to look at it for this one. <laughs> I'm not saying he was wrong to use this picking pattern. You know, in certain passages, sometimes there's just different ways you could do it. As long as there's some efficiency there, I think it's fine. I don't insist that students always pick songs precisely the way I do, but if it's particularly inefficient, I'm gonna call you on that for sure because we wanna develop really good habits. And those are the two techniques that I make sure my students get really good at. Standard alternate picking and this pick in the direction you're going next. One of the other amazing things about that song is that there are so many chords and not all those chords are in key. If we were in the key of A minor, what's a D major chord doing there? There's no D major chord in the key of A minor. And in the song, there's an E major chord. E major is also not in A minor. Now, E major is a pretty common substitution in a minor key. We sometimes call that harmonic minor, and that's in lots of songs. But regardless, 
a song in A minor with both those two chords out of key, that's one of the things that gives it that big lift every time that D major chord comes around and every time that E major chord comes around. It sounds so cool. And so what if we were gonna take a solo over that chord progression? It's a really good one to solo over. There's no solo in the animal song, but that doesn't mean we can't. Do we have to alter the scale that we're playing? We don't if we're using A minor pentatonic, but we could. We could add a special note because whenever there's a chord out of key, I always think that's a really cool opportunity to add the note that is not in key back into the scale we're playing, at least for that moment, because that's the note that we're least expecting. And yet, if it's in the chord underneath, we can play it. That's always true. If it's in the chord underneath, we can play it in our solo. So how do we know what note that is? We could literally just compare an E minor chord to an E major chord. We could just look at cowboy E minor and we see that it's this shape, right? And if we look at cowboy E major, we see that it's this shape. What's the difference? It has this note is the difference, right? That's a G natural becomes a G sharp. So therefore, at that moment, whenever there's an E being played in the song, that means we could play a G sharp note in our solo. Now we have to know where some G sharps are, right? We could plan ahead. We could just find some. We could find one right here. That's pretty handy because it's not in A minor pentatonic, but it's tucked in right between these two notes here, right? So if I'm using A minor pentatonic easy shape, special note. Hit it. You can even hear. That's a weird sounding note in a way, but when you hear that chord, it's there in the chord, so it's gonna have that really cool sound. It's gonna stand out. So now you may have noticed I was borrowing strongly, strongly from the melody of House of the Rising Sun. And you may have noticed that I had another G sharp later on because there's a G sharp up here in extension shape. Right there. So the first time that that E came around, I used the lower G sharp. And then it came around pretty soon after, just by the way the chord sequence goes. And then I used the G sharp higher up just to make it different. Now, if you're really paying attention, there was one other sneaky little note that I added in because it's in the vocal melody. There is a house, that one right there. A house, that B note. Ah, I just really wanted that vocal melody in there. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a tab of this solo following that vocal melody, and I'm gonna put that in our Patreon for you guys. this video I'm gonna put another one right here on the screen for you that will help you improve your guitar playing we've got lots more on our patreon group you can check out that link below and don't forget I've got my book guitar soloing like a pro which is available on Amazon my name is Blue Morris and I'll see you next week